Finally living 100% of grid. In this video, we'll be sharing our experience and our journey to move off grid. So we have free light, free water, no cold showers, and I have no energy bills and no water bill. Here's how. Off grid, we install a solar PV system. PV stands for photovoltaic, which just simply means solar panels. And then for water heating, we all want a nice warm shower or hot shower in winter. We install the EVD tubes. And then finally, we install a water well or known as a borehole here in South Africa. And that has taken us off grid for water and electricity. Now, just by installing solar PV was not sufficient to move us off grid because water heating accounts for almost 50% of our consumption. So we had to employ further means to move off grid. Okay, number one, let's start with electricity. What did we need to do? to generate our own electricity. So number one, we had to install 26 panels. Number two, we installed a 12 kilowatt inverter. And it's a three phase inverter because we have a three phase supply. You don't need to go three phase. If you have a single phase, that's fine. You can also go parallel. You can parallel your inverters to build up that generation capacity. And then we went with four batteries. So let's go back to the the, the solar panels. The solar panels are capable of generating about 12 kilowatts of energy from the sun and the inverter will generate up to 12 kilowatt and then the batteries are there for storage. So we have about 20 kilowatt hours of storage. The highest that we ever generated with this system was 75 kilowatt hours in one day. That is impressive. So I'm really pleased with the efficiency of the solar panels. That's something to look out for when you are selecting your solar panel. After we installed the solar panels and the inverter and the batteries, we also needed to optimize our energy usage. So that meant looking at our lighting and looking at our appliance usage. So what we did was we swapped out and replaced all our CFL, compact fluorescent or so-called energy saving light bulbs with LED lighting. LED lighting takes up, consumes significantly less energy than the CFLs. The CFLs were introduced in the, I think, early 90s. And at that time, they were meant to replace the incandescent light bulbs. So when you're off grid, you need to run as long as you can and optimize all of your storage capacity so that at night you are you're not going to you're not going to run out of your storage. Next, we had to look at our habits. So when you're connected to the utility, you you're a bit spoiled because you know that you've got your energy always available to you or mostly available. But when you're running off grid, you are responsible for generating and storing your own electricity. So we had to adjust our habits of how we use our appliances. So for example, it doesn't make sense to run your dishwasher at night. Okay, we, you could just wipe down your, your, your dishes and then store them in the dishwasher and run the dishwasher in the morning. So that way you are maximizing your solar generation capacity without depleting your storage overnight. Next, we had to look at water heating. Now, when you're running off grid, if you have a partly cloudy day or you have three or four days of consecutive full cloud cover or rainy days or even snowy days. Okay, here in South Africa, we hardly get any snow, but we do get three to four days, even up to five days of consecutive rain. Now, in that scenario, what are you going to be doing for cooking and water heating and also if it's w during winter time you need to consider space heating and then also um, cooling if it's in summer 
So if it's a hot summer's day and you are indoors, you need to keep, depending on the design of your dwelling, you need to keep a cool temperature inside to make it comfortable. So with all of that in mind, we then had to consider what we do for a cloudy day or four consecutive or five consecutive consecutive days of full cloud cover or rain. The final consideration was then water heating because when you encounter that scenario of four or five consecutive days of cloud cover, what do you do about water heating? It doesn't make sense to use your battery storage to heat up water because it's just going to deplete and also cause more wear and tear on your batteries and your inverter as well. So then we looked at a gas water heater or a gas geyser. And somebody posted a comment about biogas. So biogas is predominantly methane gas. It is something that is not widely used in South Africa, but I believe in the US it is. I The, the truth is I don't know much about biogas, so I cannot provide an opinion on it. However, what I did use here and what we have we've employed is a LPG or liquid petroleum gas water heater and you can take a look at the picture here we opted for a Japanese built water heater and what that does is is if the water is from coming from the electric water heater is less than 40 degrees then that water is diverted to the gas water heater for further heating and that way we've been able to move off grid and finally off grid electricity and water is it's efficient and it is it reduces carbon emissions and what with the rising costs of energy it makes sense if you do have the ability to go off grid then why not you it's it, it's a clean form of energy it's renewable there's no noise like diesel generators and carbon em emissions that, uh, emitted into the atmosphere so if you if you are keen to go off grid then it's well worth considering so if you want to take a look at our five month review of our system watch it here thank you for watching